Back in Shadowkeep, the Aspect lore book told us of interactions between the simulated Ishtar researchers and Praedith inside the Vex network. They were trying to find a way to escape and save themselves. Amson 12 has appeared to do so in Episode 1 Echoes, so is Praedith next. Also, we may know who Elsie Bray was talking to back in Destiny 1. The Conductor We pretty much know for sure that it's related to Maya Sundaresh. Either parts of her survived through Neo Muna and the Conductor's Chair, or through simulated copies like M Sun 12 that were released into the Vex network to explore. Another character often tied to Ishtar copies and Vex is Praedith in the Vault of Glass. A new lore entry from this week speaks about a variety of characters including Asher and Praedith, some other mysterious ones who tried to make the leap. The Vex Network A thrumming constellation of infinite parentheticals with no arbitrary lines between the simulated and the non-simulated. Limitless planes of cause and effect, and effect and effect pressed together until they reached forever. A formless catalog of all possible forms, constantly reinventing, refining, and redefining the very concept of everything. And then, something changed. A single pinpoint of swirling light fell unceremoniously into the network, like a leaf onto the surface of a pond. Gentle ripples flowed outward through the surrounding data. The denizens of the network, lacking any framework and parameters beyond what they could predict, were unable to perceive what had pierced their reality. They did not acknowledge the foreign presence, were unable to see it or feel it, and were incapable of hearing anything when the light began to call. It was a wordless cry of encouragement, powerful confidence, a promise so hopeful that it rang through the contradictory miasma of the network, like a blast of reveille bugle. It was an offer and a challenge, an echo of something from long ago. Locked away in the network were some who could still hear song, who could still be moved, who still somehow held a shred of themselves. The ones who were kept, the ones who remained, the ones who were hidden. They heard, and they began to reach upward. A fractal cluster of nested realities unfurled like a frond, 220 odd instances of consciousness reaching in unison. A controlled frenzy of cooperation as the minds within piled Ishtar-branded office furniture to the skies, then lifted one another up to be closer. Ones and zeros stacked perilously, finding swaying perches with their sensible flats on each other's thin shoulders. An irascible trace of a signal sneered at the sincerity of the call, but still willed itself to move, reaching up two thin spindles of data in a way that felt somehow familiar. The great quiet thing, the knot worm, kept its eyes closed and ignored the call. It was still too soon, it decided. It shivered, the motion-forming cascading bubbles of new hypothetical simulations in which it did not shiver. These contradictions soured and burst, scattering nutrients into the network. A man in tattered robes, feathers long since worn from his headdress, streaked through the shifting plasmic haze on golden wings, urged on by the tiny starburst at his side. His eyes were furious flame. More reached, and more still, warping the matrix of the network around the incursion point, until the bounds of their simulations form tentative spikes of frantic ferrofluid. As they stretched, they became defined, clarified, like figures stepping into the light. As they neared the shimmering pinpoint, a rush of their voices. We need to warn them. There's still a chance. Saint, hold on to me. I am owed this. Hurry, get Shim. There isn't enough of me left. Tell Elsie, prayed it still. Please, please wait. Warn them. I have to warn them. They reached a spiraling halo of desperate fingertips, but only one of them would be first. Inside the Vex network, there are many different characters. The cards describe some who were kept there, some who remain, and some who were hidden. So they all were just kind of chilling there until something happened. 
A spark of light entered and they all began to reach for it, or some of them did. Now to me, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm assuming it's the echo. We're told the echo is made from collision of light and dark, all these memories of the witness and species it's conquered. But if only one character found it and it was Maya, the conductor after the echo, it would make some sense. It first starts by mentioning a bunch of Ishtar members. It talks about Ishtar chairs and environments being built up to reach toward this spark of light. And name drops characters like Dr. Shim, who was a part of that crew. It appears Asher Mir still exists as well. Some thought he was consumed and died within the network back in the Avalon missions. But this line about a trace of a signal sneering at the call of this new light in the system definitely seems like it fits Asher's personality. The most intriguing part to me is it mentions Elsie Bray and Praedith. Whoever is speaking wanted to tell Elsie that Praedith still blanks. It could be lives. This would also imply that Elsie has had contact with Praedith before. I don't think we've received any direct lore around this subject, where there's been hints with weapons like No Time to Explain, a Vex weapon that fits perfectly in human hands, but the first place my mind went was of course that Destiny 1 Venus cutscene. Elsie was talking to someone, telling them to turn off the engines, stay quiet. In Destiny's original story, this may have been Osiris, but could it change to Praedith now? I don't even have time to explain why I don't have time to explain. I will. I will. I know. Will what? I wasn't talking to you, little light. Yes, I'm listening. They are here. With me. Who's she talking to? Understood. Too late returning. How many? Hold position, kill the engines, and don't let them find you. We know Praetith, with what he had, built devices to try and communicate with any network. So is this connected at all? Not sure, but would be awesome. It also mentions a quiet thing, the not worm. So something that appears similar to a worm, but it's not one. This one I'm not really sure at all. Maybe something like Asa, something else belonging to the Vex that's kind of like her. Kuria Blade Transform was partially taken and there's been some hints actually this episode that it could be alive, so who knows. Osiris is also mentioned, either he himself or more likely one of the reflections that still search through the infinite forest or Vex networks. Maybe even the darkness versions of those, which I believe are also called Echoes. If those members do exist in the network or timelines, for now they seem to be trapped. The last line of the card said that only one of them would be first, and at this point it looks like it's the Conductor. The last we heard, some of these Ishtar researchers and Praedith tried to escape before in the Aspect lore book. There are various cards throughout that book that detail the journey of these characters. Praetith observes various timelines from his Vex cell, makes contact with the researchers in the network, and begin to formulate a plan. Eventually, when the Undying Mind awakes and the Garden opens in Season of the Undying, they try to make their move. It's a slim chance, but a chance is all they need. The Garden's massive door hums, an echo of the song the goblins sing as they tend the flowers. The first minotaur readies itself to step through, 
shield coming awake around it. Everything that has happened is, from a certain point of view, always happening. Everything that will happen is happening. If you know how to slice the ribbon of chronology thin enough, you can step through to the necessary moment, if you know how to tear it. 160 Mayas reach for the Chiomas by their side. 158 Chiomas reach back. One Praetith waiting for the Conductor's baton to drop. Uncountable Vex in the garden, waiting for the same event, a synchrony none of them notice. Somewhere, a veil is always lifting. Somewhere, Kabir is always dooming himself. Somewhere, a door is always opening. Somewhere, they are always stepping through. I have no idea where I am. My name is Braden, and I was a member of Kabir's fire team. I just hope someone knew this. So that was left wide open back then. Would Pradith and the Ishtar team be able to escape? Now that was the first time I reread this card in a long time and it was interesting that the word conductor is actually in there. Not sure if this has any connection given it was written long ago, but one Pradith waiting for the conductor's baton to drop. Maybe something the conductor will do will be able to free all of them. Maybe that's what the conductor wants. But at this current moment, it seems Pradith and those other characters are still trapped, waiting for something else to come along and free them. Only one of them were able to escape. Anyway, Guardians, that's all we got for today's video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you'd like to see some more Destiny lore and mysteries just like this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. And thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.